teammates. First and foremost, if this is your first time listening to the Move Swiftly podcast, welcome to the show. Welcome to the number one show on innovative teamwork. Great to have you. Looking forward to having you back for more. To my regular listeners, you already know how we get down right to the point. And today we are going to discuss the difference between your work, finding exactly what your work needs to be versus just doing a job for a check every two weeks. And this is a very, very important distinction that you have got to learn and you've got to learn this lesson as as soon as possible. You are never to the earlier, we'll say it like this, the earlier you're able to learn this lesson and or teach this lesson, the better off you'll be, you will be, okay? Or when I say early, I mean, the minute that you meet, let's say you're, I know the majority of people that are, that tune into the work, tune into the show, are business owners. And I know you've heard from a ton of great people, a ton of great business owners on the show. Now, I mean, this is, again, it's the number one show on innovative teamwork for a reason. If you're new here, just letting you know now you are in, you are listening to the number one podcast on innovative teamwork. Uh, and, because the the podcast has been so successful and has had so many people on it because so much of it has been about the work of a person and not necessarily a person's job, whether it's just myself talking to you here or it's a guest that I have on, it has been all about finding your work and doing your work, all right? Not necessarily doing what someone calls a job or just doing something for a paycheck every two weeks. That is not what we do over here in the Move Swiftly world. We more so focus on the work of a person, all right? And because I am, I am recording this, it is September, middle of September, which means this episode probably won't be out for another couple of weeks because I have that many recordings. I believe we yeah, have that many. Actually, no, probably another couple months. This episode won't be out, but it'll be perfect timing because it'll be the new year and, you know, we're starting our our New Year's goals, not our New Year's resolutions and all that kind of stuff. So the the point of me bringing all that up is for I, I need to remind you, all right, that this look at this episode, use this episode as a reminder, all right, as a reminder that you need to be chasing after what your work is not chasing after this new fancy job. And to the people who are kind of the employers, the business owners and the folks who are responsible for hiring folks, you need to be teaching the newcomers in your business, the new potential, the potential employees and the prospective folks that you're looking at or whatever it is, you need to be teaching or even the current employees, the current staff, the current people that you have working underneath you, you need to be teaching them that they need to be doing the work. They need to be doing, they need to be finding their work and not looking at it as a job and asking this question, do you feel like you're fulfilling your work and not necessarily just coming in here and doing a job every two weeks and getting paid every two weeks, but do you feel like you are necessarily fulfilling the work you want to do and not necessarily doing a job for a paycheck? It's a very important distinction and we're going to be clearing up before you. If you haven't heard it before, we're going to be clearing it up by the end of today's episode. So I will I will admit, uh, and I have to pay homage to Wes Moore, who is the governor of Maryland. And like I, like I mentioned, I am recording this middle of September, so we're still in the height of election season and the politics, and there's all sorts of things going on in the, the political world right now. It's Trump, and it's actually recording this the, the weekend after the first debate between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump. And I've given my thoughts on that. I've given my opinions on that on, on all my videos, stuff like that. You can go look up my opinion and my thoughts just on that in in itself. But the more and more, the more (laughs) coincidentally saying more, right. But the more that I'm paying attention to politics nowadays, and the more I am really kind of feeling my guy, man, a guy from Maryland, a guy from Maryland, a governor of Maryland. Maryland is my hometown, actually. So it's pretty nice to say. Now, I don't know what his policies necessarily are right now uh, because I, I don't live in Maryland anymore. But I, I've really been feeling my guy, uh, Wes Moore, Wes Moore from who is the governor of Maryland. I mean, just his story in itself is really inspiring to me because of how similar our story is, you know, Caribbean parents and, you know, he's out there in, in my hometown doing his thing and all that kind of stuff. And 
when he speaks, it, it's a very em empowering and he, he kind of does, he gives me those feelings that I used to get when I used to listen to President, Bar former president, 44th president, Barack Obama speak, right? So again, I don't know anything necessarily about the policies. I just know I can relate to, to him very well. And when it comes to these politicians and politics and working in government, and having political aspirations to grow and, you know, do some some great things in the community and be a leader, which is one of my goals, one of my aspirations, actually. To be a speaker and, and doing all these things, being a great public speaker, all that kind of stuff. You know, you look for people that you can lock arms with and maybe learn something from and pick their brain and all that. So as this political season is going on, you know, Wes Moore has really caught my attention and I've been picking up and listening to come a couple of his YouTube videos, and I actually just finished his audio book titled The Other Westmore and all that, where he talks about another Westmore that ended up in a life sentence in prison versus him who ended up doing all these great things. And he talked about how they could have easily, easily been the in the same situation, how it could have been flip flop, you know, one or two decisions here and there. And he could have been the one in the life sentence in prison for a life. And the other one could have easily been, you know, the governor of Maryland and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, I, I pay attention to all that kind of stuff because it's very important to the world I'm in, the world I create, the platform that I've created when it comes to innovative teamwork and helping companies, helping business owners keep the keep keep a staff together and, you know, giving them tactics, giving them strategies to make it so their business is running like a championship high school football team, which is what it is. This is the guarantee that I make to all business owners out there, right? So anyway, I, I was listening. I, was, I can't remember where, what I was doing. I think I was driving from Palm Beach to Miami, if I'm not mistaken. And I took a little a trip for, yeah, because it was Labor Day weekend, I believe. Had to do jury duty or something like that, but I had a long story short. I had a long drive. And because, again, I, I'm not really when it comes to the, the two presidential candidates, I've already come out and said that Donald Trump is getting my vote. But, you know, even neither one of these two candidates do I really relate. I mean, I, I relate to when it comes to the identity of Kamala Harris, seeing that I have Caribbean parents and the vice president Waltz was a former high school football coach. I relate to them a little better, but because of the way they got in the race, it, it's all just kind of shady, in my opinion. Excuse me. And, you know, when it comes to Donald Trump, he has actual economic policies that he's answering specifically and giving specific answers about his policies and what he plans on doing. And as a business owner, it's my responsibility as a business owner to not only as a business owner, but as a host of this very show, the to make sure I do what I can to to try to get Trump in office as opposed to getting someone like a Kamala Harris and a Tim Walz in office because that's my that's the responsibility I have to the consumers of my work to the the people that are all about my uh, that uh, that make up of my community the business owners that make up the community that I've created right and even as much as I may identify with Kamala and Tim Walz and all that they still don't have the the plan and they're not the kind of people that make up the the community that I'm responsible for serving, the young people that I'm responsible for serving. I'm responsible for serving young people that need a, a solid economic plan and which is going to teach them how to find their work, not to people who are just regurgitating the same talking points in every fucking speech and every fucking uh, uh, every time they do an interview, it's pretty much the same talking points. But that ain't the point. The point of the point of politics, because because politics is so there's so many people involved. The point of it is that you become a critical thinker. You become a critical thinker, and you focus more so on the ideas and the things and the values and the and you develop some level of integrity to stand on when it comes to what exactly you want to what exactly you need to be doing to help this country what exactly you the work you need to be doing for whether it's for yourself or for not necessarily actually let me scratch that the work that you need to be doing for people in order to do your part to do your part to make it so the world 
you leave, the world you leave is better, is better for the young people than you had it. Okay. Say that again, nice and clear, just in case you missed it. The work you need to be doing, all right, in order, in order for you to leave this world better for young people than you had it. All right. That is what we're going to discuss here. And it was in Westmore's speech. Westmore gave a speech that Oprah is Oprah is one of I think it was Super Soul Sunday. She brought him out at some event for some reason. I can't even tell you what that I think that's what it's called, Super Soul Sunday, or whatever. And he gave a 20 minute speech about the difference between your work and your job. And you know, it was in that speech where I was really moved and I realized, hey, I don't I don't think I've done a, a full solo episode on the difference between your work and your job. So, you know, as he was giving that speech, I, like I said, I'm paying homage to him in regards to what we're talking about today in regards to how we identify exactly what our work needs to be, all right? So in order to, to clarify this for you, I, I can use my life as an example. I could use the situation I'm currently in as an example, all right? Because the school I currently teach at, it's a school named the Center for Creative Education in West Palm Beach, Florida. And it's a school that's been open the, the after school portion of it has been around for 30 years, but the actual foundation school where we have K, K through five, K, kindergarten through fifth grade, the school is fairly new. All right. And when we're talking about the Center for Creative Education, the unique element to the school is the fact that they use creativity. They use the the teaching artists and they have people that come in and teach creativity and they use it and align it they plan it they align it with teachers that are teaching the the normal curriculum you know they they to give you an example they'll bring in they'll bring in someone who may be a drummer right one of the actually one of the people who is a musician comes in and they they have this rhythm that let's say they're teaching the kids a rhythm of, on the drums. And then they're also teaching them fractions and math because there's a four count beat to the drum. So it's bump, 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 one, it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, bump, bump. you know, so they're teaching them the they're getting the math portion and they're getting the lesson and the, how to drum and all that kind of stuff. And they're seeing the way everything kind of connects. Right. So I heard that principle. I heard that concept. And I was moved, moved to the point that I, like, listen, I was so excited to become a teacher at this part, this particular school, number one, because I don't plan on, you know, I, I never plan on being a teacher. I came out of college wanting to be a football coach. I didn't want to go get sort of like some teaching certification or anything like that. That wasn't the goal. I didn't want to do that at all. Uh, I'm currently the author of five five books uh and i put out a new article every single day i'm constantly writing constantly creating new material whether it's videos whether it's this podcast tons of the stuff i'm doing that's educating people but again i didn't want to necessarily go and get a, a teaching certificate or whatever it was to be a teacher so the the hiring process for me was very it was very much like expedited because of the creativity and the things that i already had so i just wanted to get in the building right so you get in the building and you learn about what the job is, right? The job is to go and, you know, be the teacher or whatever and, you know, do the stuff with the kids and all that. However, the work, the work is for me to continue to push and move forward, all right? So what I mean by that is being able to be in a situation where I, I'll set up my podcast, I'll set up the podcast. Uh, interview people while I'm in. And if you see now lately, you'll probably see if you're a regular listener, you notice that the location, the majority of the locations of when I host the podcast is in one of the classrooms of the school. So the work and this is when I'm supposed to be uh, the the here's what I do is when I'm supposed to be actually going out for lunch and getting a break is when I'm actually recording my podcast for that hour. So I have it strategically scheduled in to where people are when they schedule to be on the show, then I have it scheduled in. It's when it's actually during the time I'm supposed to be on break with, uh, with from the school that I teach at. And I'm saying all that because I, I want you guys to understand that 
I don't look at it as a job. I look at it as my work. It's my work to make sure I'm educating as many people as possible and using this podcast, using this platform, using everything I created to continue to educate. Now, again, the job now for me, again, a person like me who's been in it for, you know, 10 plus years, over 10 years at this point, I understand like I'm just not taking a job that isn't relatable to the work I want to do, which is educating the business owners and using sports using the lessons I learned in football, using the teamwork lessons I learned in football to educate business owners on how to build a solid staff. You know, I've been doing this since, like I said, since I graduated college, which was 22 years old, I'm going to be around 36 years. I'll probably be 36 by the time, at least close to 36 by the time this episode comes out. And even before, you know, I was in, before I graduated from school, there were things I was doing. There was questions I was asking to make it. So I was doing stuff that I caught on to this message really, really early in life. All right. And the reason that it's so important for you to catch this message and you to understand that your work needs to be what you focus on is because if you get stuck, if you get stuck in a situation too early, not knowing this, if you get stuck in a situation where you're making so much money that it's hard, so much money in a, you're making so much money in a quote unquote job that you really don't understand or a quote unquote job that is just simply paying the bills. Eventually that lifestyle will catch up to you and you won't be making a damn difference. It, it will be a very, very lonely path to go on. And the longer and longer you're on that path, the more difficult it is for you to get off that train track and figure out exactly what your work needs to be. All right. So the the main thing, the main focus that you have to have is understanding what problem do you want to solve? What is the problem that eats at you and eats at you and eats at you and eats at you and eats at you, eats at you. All right. So I know I'll, actually I'll close you out with this because I am recording this on the late night. I'm recording this like late on a Saturday night where a lot of the things that I want to mid, like a mid September, giving you some context here, all right? It's mid September on a Saturday night. And there was a lot of things that I actually wanted to get done today work wise. But because college football has been on, it's hard for me to actually get anything done during college football season on a Saturday. So I had to push this recording back later. The article that I'm going to write, I'm going to, to, I'm going to have to obviously do that on Sunday before uh, before all the NFL games are start and stuff like that. Now, I know these things going in, which is why I try to get a lot of the stuff that I need to do done earlier in the, excuse me, earlier in the, early in the day, because I know when football comes back on, it's going to be like, man, it, it's hard for me not to get distracted. It's hard for me to, to do things when I know my team is on and, you know, I'm, I'm one of those, I'm one of those people that really watch the game and study the game. And because of the game, because of the game of football, I'm able to deliver messages the way I'm able to deliver messages. I learned the things in business that I've been able to learn because of watching the game. So even while I may be doing a leisure activity in my mind, I'm still doing my work. I'm still doing the work that I've been called to do. And the question now becomes now, why, what are you going to do? What exactly are you going to identify? What do you feel in your bones? What is the problem? What is the things? What is the, the things that you are looking at and saying to yourself, I've got to do something about this situation and that or else or else it's going to eat me up inside to the point where I'm not going to be able to function. I'm not going to be able to take it anymore. That is your work. Focus on that. Focus on that work. And uh, I will close you up. It's just a, just to to give more homage and I'll close you up, be close you out with uh, one of the things that Wes Moore had actually said in his, in his speech is there was a time he, he was actually talking about when he was working as an investment banker in the Bronx. And he was saying how, you know, he took the job because it paid well and all that kind of stuff. And he was at home with his Caribbean family and they asked, they gave him a check. I think he said something like his uncle gave him a check or something like that. And he even admitted on stage that if he gave him that check, he wouldn't know what to do with it, even though he was working at some bank. And that's when he realized, okay, there's something more 
I need to be doing because I'm working this job. I'm getting paid well, but I don't even know necessarily what to do if my uncle gives me a check and all that kind of stuff. And I, I bring that out. I want to close you out with that because you have to ask yourself now. You have to ask yourself right now, the job that you're going to every single day, where's the progress? What is it that you're doing to make it so you are progressing something you can control? All right. This is something that's on you. It's not on anybody else. Trust me. I, I deal with it, deal with it all day. I know the feeling of being very passionate about doing something, but being around people who it frankly just don't give a fuck. You know, frankly, are just there collecting their check every two weeks. I, I've dealt with, I deal with it now. All right. I'll deal with it right now. And again, I don't let it get to me. I simply do my work. When you focus on doing your work every day, the folks around you who are not thinking like this, the folks around you who are just kind of happy sitting back and collecting a check, eventually they will simply wither away. They will kind of be there. They'll go away quietly. All right. They will not be people that affect you over a long period of time, even though they may piss you off in the moment. And I, I, I deal with that all the time. It's okay. Relax, take a deep breath. And just continue to discover your work in that. Because to be honest with you, even in that, even in the people that aren't passionate about what they do, again, they just do what they do for their check and all that kind of stuff. Meeting those people will give you a, a, an incentive. They'll give you a clear picture on what your work needs to be because it's actually it's actually teaching you indirectly. Okay, when I build up my business, when I build up the things I want to do, that's the kind of person I don't want to have around, right? That's going to be what it actually does for you. So consider all of these things when it comes to really discovering your work and discovering it. And it has to be something that's coming from the inside. It has to be something that's driving you. It has to be something that's tugging on your heartstrings and something that you want to do so badly. You just, it keeps you up late at night so fucking badly that you, you'll do whatever it is you have to take to do it. That's how you find your work. That's how you identify it, whatever it is. And as I'm talking, as you hear the passion in my voice and I keep going and I keep going and I keep going, all right? It's whatever is tugging at your heartstrings right now, that's going to be the work. That's going to be the work that you're called to do. Go do it. Go do the work and don't just do a job, quote unquote, all right? Fellow teammates, continue to move swiftly. We... We'll talk more soon.